Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Congregation of Yahweh in Panama City, Florida. Today is January the 30th, 2021. My name is Anthony Gaudiano. And the title of uh, the sermon today is going to be The Two Witnesses of Revelation 11.3. The title of the last book is called, uh, of the Bible is called Revelation. It is about events prophesied to occur at the end time when each of seven seals on a scroll are open. At the last seal, seven trumpets are heard sequentially worldwide. When the fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpet sound the events which follow are called respectively the first second and third woe revelation 11:3 records that when the sixth trumpet is heard and the second woe begins two witnesses appear their identity is not revealed various suppositions about them have been proffered but commonly lack scriptural support. This begs the question, can the identity of the two witnesses be logically deduced? The answer seems yes, based upon the preponderance of certain characteristics in scripture. The interlinear Bible is a more literal translation than most Bibles. In a Revelation 11.3, an important characteristic of the two witnesses is mentioned. The interlinear Bible has Yeshua the anointed saying, quote, they are to be the two witnesses of me, end of quote. This infers that they will have previously been associated with Yeshua and have characteristics that will enable them to preach Yeshua's message to every person in the world in all languages during the second woe. Verses referring to Yeshua in the Old and New Testament can be searched in a concordance to determine which beings were associated with Yeshua and also have the characteristics to be called the two witnesses of me. The same search results eliminate those who do not qualify. Some suppositions about the identity of the two witnesses. Some people have supposed the two witnesses will be Moses and Elijah, Daniel and John the Baptist, the Old and New Testament books, the Holy Spirit, Enoch, etc. Some have supposed the two witnesses will be men living in our era. Others suppose that they will be the archangel Michael and Gabriel. It's informative to examine these suppositions. One, Moses and Elijah. Some of the things that the two witnesses are prophesied to do and be able to do are indeed reminiscent of the plagues by Moses, that's total darkness for three days, turning water into blood as examples, the ability to shut rain from the sky, etc., are reminiscent of Elias withholding rain for three and a half years as in 1 Kings 17, 1. Both Moses and Elijah were prophets and are mentioned as being at the transfiguration of Yeshua in Mark 9, 4. However, the Bible does not record they associated with Yeshua the anointed when he was on earth. Some have supposed that the prophets Elijah and Enoch will be the two witnesses because they were translated, parentheses, transported, end of parentheses, somewhere undesignated but assumed to be heaven. 
therefore are assumed not to have died. Strong's uh, Greek word 3346 for translated appears twice in Hebrews 11.5 in reference to Enoch. However, the Bible does not record that Elijah and Enoch associated with Yeshua the Anointed when he was on earth. Two, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament mentions the coming of a Savior and the New Testament records that it occurred. So, the Old Testament and New Testament books are indeed literal witnesses of Yeshua the Anointed and his ministry. This supposition was championed by Seventh-day Adventist founders Helen G. White and Uriah Smith. Yet, it does not make logical sense that physical books become beings which can do the things attributed to the two witnesses. Neither does it seem likely the Old Testament and New Testament as allegorical beings can be killed, resurrected, and ascend to heaven as prophesied in the book of Revelation, itself a part of the New Testament. Three, the Holy Spirit, the holy power emanated from the Almighty Yahweh and His Son, Yeshua the Anointed, has and will continue infinitely longer than the 42 scriptural months, uh, months of the book of Revelation, says the two witnesses uh, will be present on earth. The one holy power is an inanimate force which has no body, and so could not be killed and then resurrected. Four, men in our time who claim that they are the two witnesses. Don Esposito and his wife Petra are Yahweh's missionaries in Israel. Don has a congregation, a Bible school, and hosts feasts and observances there. Don has mentioned various people he has been in contact with who claim to be the two witnesses. Herbert W. Armstrong and his son Garner Ted Armstrong of the Worldwide Church of De uh, God, uh, both now deceased. Before their death, some church members thought that they would be the two witnesses. Another uh, example is Brother Elisha this aged man was featured on a website called Great Joy in Great Tribulation about the year 2005. But there is no mention of him now or of a person who would be the other witness. It's likely that Brother Elisha is now deceased also. Two guys in Australia have claimed to be two witnesses but neither has demonstrated the ability to do what the two witnesses can and will do. And then there's Buffalo Bill Yisrael Hawkins of the House of Yahweh, Abilene, Texas, and his brother previously claimed in their literature that they were the two witnesses. However, the brother who resided in Israel died about 20 years ago. No human being has the characteristics of the two witnesses as mentioned in the book of Revelation. Further, any human being which has died would have to be resurrected before the second coming of Yeshua, which is not scriptural. The earliest published supposition that the two witnesses will be the archangels Michael and Gabriel is thought to have been understanding the two witnesses by David Lochran in 1994. His article was put on the internet in 1996 by the Stewarton Bible School, Scotland. 
In April 2000, there was a cassette tape titled The Two Witnesses by Don Esposito, which had a very similar premise. The last two sources cite scriptural support for their supposition that the two witnesses will be none other than the archangel Michael and Gabriel. Definitions to aid understanding. Most people imagine that an angel would resemble that which they have seen on paintings, etc. A blonde-haired, blue-eyed, barefoot male, clothed in a long white garment, and having wings. A cherub is visualized similarly, but has but as a somewhat rotund infant. Such images are without scriptural support. The word translated angel in James Strong Exhaustive Concordance Hebrew Dictionary is number 4397. It is the word malik, pronounced as if it were spelled M-A-L hyphen A-W-K. Malik is defined as to dispatch as a deputy, a messenger, an angel, parentheses, also a prophet, priest, or teacher, close parentheses, also an ambassador, an angel, and a king. Our understanding of the word Malik is enhanced <laughs> if we mentally substitute the word messenger in place of the word angel and without visualizing a creature with wings. It is true that there are Bible verses which record certain messengers being with Yeshua and that the messengers manifested themselves as male beings dressed in white. The word translated angel in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance Greek Dictionary is number 32. It is the word A-G-G-L-E-O-S, uh, S, pronounced as if it were spelled A-N-G, apostrophe, hyphen, E-L, hyphen, O-S. It is used about 100 times in the Bible, of which about 50% are in the book of Revelation. The word simply means messenger. The word translated cherub in Strong's Hebrew Dictionary is number 3742, and it's spelled K-E-R-W-B, and it's pronounced as if it were spelled K-E-R hyphen O-B-B, cherub. It is defined as an imaginary figure, plural is cherubim, uh, a figure made according to a pattern shown on Mount Sinai. Admonishments to replicate the pattern Moses saw on Mount Sinai. Scripture shows that the tabernacle on earth was to be a replica of Yahweh's throne room in heaven. Exodus 25, 18. And you shall make two cherubim of gold, a beaten work, shall you make them at the two ends of the mercy seat and make one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other end of one piece with the mercury seat shall you make the cherub on the two ends of it. Verse 20. And the cherub shall spread, cherubim shall spread their wings on high covering the mercy seat with their wings with their faces one to another Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be, 21. And you shall put the mercy seat above the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you. The ark of the covenant with its cover, the mercy seat, is to be a replica of Yahweh's actual throne. The throne has, quote, two anointed ones, Close quote. One on, e on the right and one on the left, same as the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. 
Further, the anointed ones are to be oriented the same way as at Yahweh's throne in heaven. Exodus 25:40. This is Moses speaking. Quote, See that you make them after their pattern, which has been shown on the mount. This is the uh, orders given to Moses. The following verse, verses uh, record that Solomon uh, possessed the scriptures and the Ark of the Covenant. He replicated the cherubim at the end of the mercy seat in large scale for the Holy of Holies inside the temple. The replicated cherubim represent the actual cherubim that stand in the presence of Yahweh's throne. No human has stood in the presence of the Almighty Yahweh. 1 Kings 6, 23-28, quote, And in the oracle, or the Holy of Holies, he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits. That's about 15 feet high. Verse 24, And five cubits, that's about seven and a half feet, uh, was the one wing to the furthest part of the other was ten cubits. That's about 15 feet. Verse 23. And the other cherub was ten cubits. Both were of one measure and one form. 26. The height of the one cherub was ten cubits, and so was the height of the other cherub. And he set the cherub within the inner house, the Holy of Holies, and the wings of the cherubim were stretched forth so that the wing of one touch one another in the middle of the house. And he overlaid the cherubim with gold. End of quote. Notice, A, the cherubim in the Holy of Holies are carved of olive wood. B, one cherub is on the right side and one on the left side of the mercy seat. They are in the presence of Yahweh. And D, he replicated the cherubs, uh, the replicated cherubs have the same orientation to the mercy seat as the actual anointed ones that stand in the presence of the Elohim of the earth. Characteristics which support the archangel supposition. Several characteristics of the two witnesses can be seen in the following verses. Revelation 11, 3 to 6, starting with verse 3, quote, And I will give power to my two witnesses, the witnesses of me, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and sixty day clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before, parentheses, in the presence of, close parentheses, the Elohim of the earth. And if any man desires to hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemy. And if any man shall desire to hurt them, in this manner must he be killed. These have the power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. Close uh, parentheses. Notice. A. Revelation 11.4 mentions two olive trees. And you can compare that to Daniel 10.5 to 13. I am Michael, one of the two princes. B. Revelation 11.4 mentions the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before or in the presence of the Elohim of the earth. Now this is Daniel. Also in Luke uh, 1.11, the angel of Yah standing on the right side of the altar of incense. The right side. Luke 119, 
I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of Elohim. Can't get much clearer than that. Luke 126, and the angel Gabriel, again, a reference to a messenger by name, specifically mentioning Michael and Gabriel, none others. C, scripture verses which refer to, quote, the two anointed ones. D, the two witnesses will prophesy about Yeshua and his good news for 1,260 days. That's Revelation 11, 2 to 3, which is about three and a half years. They use a 360-day year for this calculation. The same scriptural time period is mentioned in the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Revelation 11, 9, quote, And the demon Abaddon shall kill the two witnesses in Jerusalem, close parentheses. Apparently the two witnesses will cause plagues, lack of rain, etc., on those who follow Abaddon. No human has the ability to do such things. Seemingly, the two witnesses begin their mission as spiritual be beings and end their mission as mortals. They are killed in the presence of their tormentors. Then, after three and a half days, are caused to become alive again in the presence of their tormentors and to ascend to heaven. The olive trees and the lampstands are symbolic of archangels. The olive trees and the lampstand are associated in Scripture. Zechariah 4, 2 to 3, and verses 12 to 14, starting with verse 2. And he said to me, What do you see? And I said, I have seen, and behold, a lampstand, all of gold, with its bowl on the top of it and seven lamps on it. There are seven pipes to each of the lamps which are upon the top of it and the two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side. In Revelation 1, 12 to 17, there is a similar wording and a similar orientation. Quote, starting with verse 11. Then I answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the lamp and upon the left side of it? And I answered the second time and said to him, What are these two olive branches which are beside the two golden spouts that empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Know you not what these are? And I said, No, my master. Then, he, then said he, quote, These are the two anointed ones that stand in the presence of the Yahweh of the whole earth, uh, by Yahweh of the whole earth. Close quote. In the end of your Bible, the literal translation is the two anointed ones of fresh oil. The two anointed ones of fresh oil. Relationship of Yahweh and Yeshua to the cherubim. In the following verses, notice Yahweh's position with respect to the cherubim. Psalm 80 and verse 1. Quote, Give ear, O Yahweh, shepherd of Israel, you that lead Joseph like a flock, you that sit above the cherubim, shine forth. Close quote. Psalm 99.1 Yahweh reigns. Let the people tremble. He sits above the cherubim. Let the earth be moved. Sits above the cherubim. Same orientation as the cherubim on uh, the Ark of the Covenant. It's, 
Isaiah 37, 16, quote, O Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel that sits above the cherubim, you are the Elohim, even you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Close quotes. Ezekiel 10, 1. And I look and behold in the firmament that was over the head of the cherubim, and there appeared above them as it were a sapphire stone in the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spoke to the man clothed in linen. New term here. Scriptures have spiritual messengers prophesize um, uh, which have the spiritual messengers prophesied include Genesis 19, Judges 6 and 13, Daniel 3 and 28, 6 and 22, Acts 5, 17, and 12 and 8, and Revelation 1, 1. Manifestation of the messengers. <clears throat> Notice uh, the number of verses with man-like manifestations associated with Yahweh before the end-time events in the New Testament. Consider the relevance of them as the archangels Michael and Gabriel. Genesis 19.1, quote, And the two angels, not called men here, called into Sodom, came into Sodom. Angels can take the form of men and likely did so, although the verses do not identify them as angels. Genesis 18, and this is from the interlinear version, quote, And Yah appeared to him by the oaks of Manre, and behold, he, that's Abraham, saw three men uh, appear to him. Lord, in the t uh, tr interlinear Bible, uh, here is in the Hebrew the word Y-H-W-H, or Yahweh. When... Uh, even they shall keep the way of Yah. Now, these are two men now. They're not identified as angel. They're men. Angels, perhaps, and likely manifested as men. Isaiah 63, 7. It, it mentions the messenger uh, of his presence. The messenger or the angel of his presence in relation to the restoration of Israel. In Ezekiel 28:11, a man measuring, a man measuring. This is an angel, a messenger measuring in the form of a man. Daniel 8:11, the prince of hosts has the appearance of a man. Host is often used in the Bible to refer to angels, lots of angels. Daniel 8.20, a man flying swiftly. The two witnesses must be able to fly quickly from nation to nation to witness to all peoples on earth in their respective language and not be limited by conventional transportation means. Accordingly, they cannot be human beings. Daniel 9.20, the man Gabriel, mentioned by name, messenger mentioned by name, angel mentioned by name, touched him and was able to fly swiftly. Here very clearly shows that the people in Daniel 8 who were flying were angels, noted in Daniel 9.20. Not men. Daniel 10.5. And he saw a certain man clothed in white linen. Remember earlier there was mention uh, of Yeshua in linen. Daniel 12, 1. And at that time, the archangel Michael shall stand up. 21 days, lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, the one on the right uh, side of the river and one on the other spoke to him, obviously Yeshua, 
clothed in white linen, standing in the middle of the river of living water. The two men are associated with Yeshua. The two, quote, men, close quote, are associated with Yeshua. They were to be the witnesses of him, recall. Daniel 12, 6, and one said to the man dressed in linen. So again, uh, time after time we see a description of the associates, those who are associated with Yeshua. Zechariah 4, 1, and the messenger that talked with me came. Now here again is a reference to, again, a messenger. Not a human being, an, a, an angel. Zechariah 4.10 And the seven lamps, lamps, stars, etc., shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of Yahweh which run to and fro through the whole earth. Again, in Malachi 3.1 Behold, I send my messenger and he shall provide the way before me, and Yahweh, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant, messenger of the covenant, whom you desire, behold, he comes, says Yahweh of hosts. The messenger of the covenant is clearly Yeshua the anointed. Matthew 20 and 20. Quote, grant that one may sit on the right hand and one on the left, close quote. And remember, this is the lady that's asking that her sons, the sons of thunder, be uh, given these positions. And Yeshua did not grant the request as it was not his to give. Likely, Yeshua knew his father Yahweh had already designated the positions for the archangel Michael and Gabriel. Revelation 1.13, quote, one like the son of man, close quote. Revelation 14.6, and I saw another angel in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel. Ah, so they are to preach the message of Yeshua. And the message is coming from the everlasting good news or gospel. Another angel is saying, Babylon has fallen. Zechariah 2, quote, and another angel or messenger, close quote. Again, this refers to more than one. Again, Michael and uh, Gabriel. No other archangel is named. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel, parentheses, good news, close parentheses, of the kingdom of Yahweh shall be preached to all the world for a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. Now right here, uh, people who uh, believe that the um, messengers, the uh, witnesses of Yahweh are the Old Testament, and the New Testament. And there's some basis for that. Um, the Gideons have as a ministry to put Bibles in every hotel room that they can. And to their credit, they've had the King James Version translated into, I think, 72 languages, and by now probably more. Uh, and they have really gone around the world in every place they can, except probably Muslim co uh, countries, and put these books in the little uh, thing next to the telephone. So you could say that the word is all over the world. Well, perhaps not 100%, but they certainly have spread the word, not preached it, but they have spread the word for those who are just willing to pull open the drawer. Matthew 28, 1, the angel of Yah in white raiment gave the message, 
fear you not, he is not here. Now this is when Miriam uh, Magdala goes to the tomb and uh, this messenger, angel, uh, sitting on top of the tomb, the stone has been rolled back and he's talking to her. Fear you not, he is not here. He, Yeshua, is not here. He had already resurrected. And the last uh, example I'll give you is Acts 1.16. When he's asked by the apostles, Will you at this time restore the reign to Israel? You shall be witnesses, quote, and the answer is, You shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and Judea. And behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Over and over and over, the same thing. Two men in white apparel. The conclusion then is the logical deduction from scriptural characteristics about the identity of the two witnesses shows that they, more than any other, will be the archangel Michael and Gabriel. Thank you.